Welcome to One on One with the Grim One. I am your host, the most electrifying man in Corpse Entertainment, the Necro Sexual. And joining me on this morbid talk, we have a four-stringed motherfucker. You might recognize him as the former bass player of Creator. And now he's raising hell with a new record and a new band called Four. So please welcome Christian Giesler. How the hell are you, Christian? Oh, I'm doing good. So Christian, how the hell are you? Tell us about your new band, Four, because if you listen to Creator... You're used to some very angry thrash metal, and four, it's a little bit stylistically different. It's more of an upbeat uh, speed metal punk effect. So tell us, how did this album and your participation in this band come to be? That was uh, really easy. It's like uh, Taylor and Jeremy um, got the uh, one day, one song thing, and um, they asked me um, to do like a black metal song or something like that, and I was like, no, I'm not interested. And, um, and they told me, it's like, uh, we still got a hardcore song. And I was like, okay, I, I'm into the hardcore song. So we did the hardcore song at one day. And uh, Taylor asked me, like, a week later, um, they are thinking about uh, doing a, a punk band together. And I was like, yeah, sure, I'm totally in. It's like, uh, I'm an old school punk uh, fan from GBH, Discharged, and stuff like this. So, for me, it was not really a big difference between playing trash metal, or metal, or punk. So it's like, uh, and actually, uh, at the beginning, it was like, uh, yeah, just le um, we're just doing a project together, and all of a sudden, it became a real band, so it's not a project anymore, it's a real band, so everybody was like, uh, wow. And yeah, it's happened really quick. How did you channel that creative energy when you were recording this new album? Everybody was throwing in uh, the ideas. So it's like, uh, and for sure, it's like uh, in the Corona uh, stuff right now, uh, nobody has something else to do. <laughs> so I was just focusing on, uh, on my bass uh, lines for four. And um, and those guys were like, wow, that's amazing. And I was like, no, that's amazing uh, um, what you're sending me. So it's like everybody was going together like this. And uh, yeah, all of a sudden it's like uh, with Brian's voice, uh, with Brian's voice, uh, when I was listening then to the songs, I was like, wow, that's actually it's more like old school, bad religion, Pennywise sound. Yeah, the guy can sing. <laughs> he, oh, yes, yes. Uh, and it's like, uh, look, I, I already got goosebumps again. Um, that's that's the first time in my whole career. Uh, so I started to play music when I was 15 and being 25 years in creator. And um, that's the first time I really work with a singer. He can really sing. So here we are in the coronavirus world. So what else have you been doing outside of this new record with four these days? I do a lot with my kids right now. So it's like, now I have the time um, to drive with bicycles or motorbike, motocross stuff. And yeah, stuff like this. I just spent most of the time with my kids. They will certainly grow up knowing that they've had a heavy metal father figure showing them the left hand path. <laughs> <laughs> Your new four album, you look at the cover and it has a very striking resemblance to a certain deep purple in rock. So what inspired you guys to make that homage? Uh, first it was like, uh, that's why it's called uh, Ombres. It was uh, like the homage on, uh, to ZZ Top. That was, uh, that was uh, Taylor's and uh, Jeremy's idea. And um, Jeremy uh, did the, uh, the whole cover by himself. Um, so p um, put it together and uh, he got the idea um, like the old LP stuff he used one and uh, we, got, uh, we got different colors like green and purple stuff like this and uh, when we choose the yellow cover so it's like I'm old I'm 50 years old and I still got the uh, original Deep Purple uh, made in Japan live oh, wow. album 
and uh, and I was like, it's not even just ZZ Top. It looks like the Deep Purple uh, made in Japan. So that's where it's coming from. Uh, yeah, thank you to ZZ Top and Deep Purple. So Christian. You've been in the game for a long time, 50 years young, still banging your head, still cranking out that rift. Tell me, who was the first heavy metal bass hero of yours? It is, and it will always be uh, John N. Whistle from The Who. It was like, uh, that was my first show, uh, what I ever saw. So my mom took me there, it was uh, uh, 90, uh, 1979, no, 90. Yeah, 70, uh, 79 uh, in essen Gruger Hall, um, The Who. Wow. Yeah. So I was uh, I was just nine years old back then. And uh, that was my first show. And then uh, so my mom was in uh, in rock music and stuff like this. And uh, and soon as like, uh, yeah, the first show was The Who. Then I saw uh, back then Led Zeppelin uh, with, jo with John Bonham and stuff like this. And then... then Ninety eighty, uh, Kiss with Iron Maiden uh, as a support band, and yeah, and it goes on and goes on and yeah. goes on, and I'm still here. <laughs> All right, the rest is history. Still rocking. This is one on one with the Grim One. So one of the questions that I ask my guest each week is to select one album that has had a special place in their hearts all this time. So tell me, what is one album? One rock and roll, one heavy metal, one punk album, whatever. One record that has changed your life forever. That's actually easy. It's like uh, exploited Beats the Bastards. Back in the day when Beats the Bastards was coming out, it's like I'm, I, I'm, I was always a big ex exploited fan. And uh, when I heard Beats the Bastards, uh, and uh, Vati, it's a, it's a pretty good uh, friend of mine, but he's still getting angry when I tell him uh, it is not a punk. Uh, record it is actually a trash metal record it's got that speed oh yeah with the double bass and stuff first time when I heard it I was like what the fuck is going on <laughs> so what else is on the horizon for you Christian now that you have this album under your belt in December um, there will be a, a, um, there will be a, a released um, like a LP and there will be uh, like 300 uh, LPs, 100 in black, 100 in the in the color, and 100 really special ones. Really special ones, ooh. Really special ones, yes. <laughs> Growing up as somebody that was in the 70s and 80s, going to show, seeing Kiss as an opening band, you ever think you would see the day that vinyl will be making the comeback that it has now? Uh, actually, no. When vinyl was gone, uh, the CDs uh, were arrived, and uh, and I never thought the vinyls coming back. And even and even the, uh, the tapes are coming back. Yeah, people like their tapes. I'm still waiting for CDs to make their comeback because that's what I have the most of. Uh, yes. And you know they're like they're big, but they're not too big. Uh, I just um, uh, talked um, the other day with a friend of mine, and he was like, uh, "You know what I'm waiting for." And I was like, what? And he was like, uh, when did the tape machines coming back? The big tape machines. Another thing, uh, when our LP uh, will, be, will be released in December, um, you don't have to turn this, uh, the LP around. So all the uh, songs fits on one side. Oh, excellent. So easy. So tell me, Christian, why should all the rock and roll metalheads, heathens and headbangers out there, why should they buy or listen to the new Four album? For me, it's just like punk music. It's like, uh, and just give it a try. If you like it, it's, hey, it's cool. If you don't like it, it's also cool. Just give it a try, baby. And you were talking about concerts before. Of course, you have several decades of touring the world, playing heavy metal. So tell me, before this coronavirus madness started, tell me about one of the most memorable shows that you witnessed, either as a band or just as a spectator, seeing it all happen. Tell me about one of your favorite concert memories. I went to thousands of concerts. <laughs> yeah. Uh. That's pretty hard. 
concert memories like uh, maybe uh, in Germany uh, there was a bizarre festival back then when we played uh, with typo negatives there and I didn't met uh, Peter Steele before so uh, uh, we, we did finish our show and it was a beautiful day the sun was going a little bit down I was on the grass with, uh, with a beer and all of a sudden the sun totally disappeared and Peter was staying in front of me and it was like hi I'm Peter Steele <laughs> and I was like I know exactly who you are and even his handshake his hand was big like up to my arm yes the great Peter Steele the eternal sex icon <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Especially now with the fall coming up, October and November, that's prime typo negative season. Christian, thank you for going one on one with the Grim One. What do you want to say to all the metalheads that are watching out there? Just say like you are, uh, guys, and the coronavirus uh, virus will, will disappear and the shows will come back. And for sure, you guys are out there and you're coming back. Wise words from a hell of a headbanger. Hey, thank you very much, Mr. Christian from 4. Check out their new album, Ombres Out There. I am the Necrosexual, and I will see you in hell. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Get drunk on your tears I'm packing the hammer To cram down your throat I'll celebrate with an orgy At your funeral